So I'm going to be talking about in situ oxidation state mapping by electron energy loss spectroscopy. Copper 2 oxide can be reduced to copper 1 oxide by vacuum annealing at temperatures greater than 473 Kelvin, and full reduction to copper 0 can happen above 673 Kelvin. This temperature range is easily reached with in situ heating holders, so this copper reduction reaction is a really good test reaction for in situ stem analysis. So the aim here is to answer this question. Can the copper oxide reduction reaction be monitored and characterized successfully using analytical stem? So the instrumentation that we used for the work is a Joel F200 uh, scanning transmission electron microscope, a GIF continuum HR energy loss spectrometer, and then two heating holders. So a furnace type holder and a MEMS type holder. All of the work was done in spectrum imaging. So either energy filtered 4D stem or standards based EOS quantification. So what's standards based EOS quantification? Essentially, it's an extension of model fitting quantification. So an experimental edge shape is spliced and scaled with a theoretical cross section for the specific experimental conditions of the data. So this allows us to calculate analytical quantities like aerial density, atomic concentration. Plural scattering can be removed, which allows us to do thickness compensation. But the important thing is the LNES region is now included in the quantification. So why is that useful? So it allows us to use multiple standards for the same ionization edge or use this kind of new method, which we call concurrent standards. So the reason that this is useful is in addition to elemental mapping, we can do fine structure mapping, phase separation, or something like oxidation state mapping, which is the core technique of this work. 4D stem. So 4D stem is convergent beam electron diffraction done in spectrum imaging. So we're in stem mode and the GIF is in imaging mode. So we're looking at a convergent diffraction pattern on the detector. Energy filtering is used to exclude inelastic scattered electrons, which improves the contrast and the diffraction disk sharpness. So it aids in the interpretation of our diffraction data. So the first experiment is a manual survey. So we're looking at copper two oxide particles drop cast onto 300 mesh nickel grids uh, with lacy carbon support film. All the data was acquired at 200 kV in a fairly small convergence angle. We acquired dual eels and energy filtered 4D stem. So we use the furnace heating holder for this with a fairly coarse step size of 50 Celsius or 100 degrees Celsius from room temperature up to 600 Celsius. So we start off with the imaging results. So HADAF imaging showed that there were some small changes up to about 350 Celsius but there was a big change at 400 degrees Celsius, so big morphological change. If we then kind of move on to the, the EELS data, the oxidation state mapping, so we're looking at concurrent standards to map copper two, copper one, and copper zero. So we generate RGB composite maps for each temperature. So we have blue copper two, red copper one, and green copper zero, and they're overlaid. So we start to see a measurable reduction to copper one at around 150 Celsius. So you see this trend from blue to red. Then as we get up to 400 degrees Celsius, kind of the map changes to green. So we're starting to form copper zero. If we then go and look at some sample energy loss spectra, so copper L23 spectra, single scattered distributions, so we've done a Fourier deconvolution, we see the same trend. So from this subregion, uh, we extract these spectra. So these fingerprints here, very, very characteristic of copper two. If we then do the same in the next kind of two maps, make the comparison here with the extracted spectra, we're looking at stuff that's very, very characteristic of copper one. And then at higher temperature, the EOS fingerprint is very characteristic of copper zero, which is, uh, which is good. So it shows that we can measure what we want to measure. Kind of as a final, uh, final kind of validation, we're going to do phase confirmation by seabed. So I've extracted convergent diffraction patterns from smaller subregions of the 4D stem data. So we've kind of got three main groupings. You've got uh, the first kind of five patterns look pretty similar. Next two look a little bit different. So they're 300 and 350C. And then the final three, the highest temperatures look different again. So if we pull out kind of three example patterns, we have the room temperature pattern, which looks very characteristic of monoclinic copper oxide, uh, copper two oxide in a 110 
zone axis orientation. The 350 Celsius is actually still monoclinic. It just looks like there's been some crystal rotation and we're actually now in a 001 zone axis orientation. Finally, if we kind of extract some diffraction data from one of the kind of the pure metal uh, regions at the higher temperatures, it looks like we have copper uh, metal in a hexagonal phase. So we have a lot of information, lots of data, but the manual acquisition approach is time intensive and has poor temperature resolution. So we see lots of changes in microstructure and chemistry, but it all happens in between 350 Celsius and 400 Celsius. So how can the stimulus resolution be improved whilst keeping the experiment practical? So we need to go to a different kind of methodology where we use full automation. So here uh, we're using multiple pass spectrum image acquisition where we save each spectrum image pass separately. The holder temperature is set after each spectrum imaging pass. There's a feedback loop for synchronization. And then we do spatial drift correction once the temperature is set and stabilized. And then we move on and acquire the next spectrum image pass. So this experiment was done with the wildfire holder. So we have copper two oxide particles, the same particles as before drop cast onto wildfire chips. We actually have some silica particles in this sample as well as copper oxide particles. So 200 kV, higher convergence angle, dual alleles. So we have much faster acquisition times here. And as a result, we're able to have a much smaller step size. So here we have a step size of four degrees Celsius instead of 50 Celsius or hundred Celsius as before. So the experiment in action so we hit capture and then you see this multiple pass acquisition kind of begin. So having the holder synchronized to this multi-pass method is really helpful to aiding the interpretation of the data. So each spectrum image pass is acquired at a fixed temperature. We're also doing live mapping. So you can see the elemental maps and the oxidation state maps kind of evolving live as the experiment goes on, which helps you kind of visualize what's going on in real time. So the first cool thing that we can do here is we can do video. We have more than 10 times the temperature resolution and 15 times the amount of data points than the manual experiment. So we've got sufficient data to render video from the elemental maps to visualize the changes. This is a really cool way of looking at the data. It allows you to visualize simultaneously changes in morphology, chemistry, and temperature. So it kind of gives you a really good overview of what's happening. And you can see there's a lot of changes in this sample happening. So that's a really good point to go back to the spectrum image data for a more detailed analysis. So we have all of these spectrum image passes. So there's 150 passes, four degrees Celsius each. The first thing I've actually done is do a three times binning in the temperature domain to improve the signal to noise ratio. So I changed the maps to 12 degrees uh, per kind of step. Then select some passes that we're actually interested in and make some comparisons. So there are two main copper oxide particles in the field of view. The copper oxidation state decreases gradually with increasing temperature, but changes in particle morphology and volume appear to be spontaneous. So you can see that the shape and kind of volume of particle A changes very drastically at this kind of one temperature step. So for particle A that happens at 424 Celsius, and for particle B, that happens at 602 Celsius. But unlike particle A, particle B actually splits into four smaller copper-rich subregions, B1 through 4. So these results are in agreement with the manual survey, but the increased temperature resolution has enabled discovery of size-dependent effects that we didn't see in the manual survey. So these changes that we see here would have happened in just a single temperature step at the previous experiment. In summary, standards-based EELS quantification enables EELS fine structure fingerprinting in addition to elemental identification, which is ideal for oxidation state mapping when applied to stem spectrum imaging. Combining this approach with multiple pass spectrum imaging and holder synchronization was found to be a highly successful method for performing in situ chemical analysis. By performing holder automation and synchronization with this multiple pass acquisition, we found that uh, we had an approach that really maximized the in situ stimulus resolution, which was temperature, 
whilst also maintaining really good acquisition time efficiency.